Is your back killing you? I know mine is. Well, for me, it's really down to poor posture and probably weak pelvic muscles. Lower back pain is also common among younger people who are desk bound all day and for people who do manual labor. So I've decided to do an episode on understanding lower back pain a little better and hopefully get some simple exercises to strengthen our back. So if you're sitting most of the time, maybe at work, at your desk, or maybe gaming, just spare 30 minutes of your time to listen to my guest today. In the past couple of years, she's been giving talks regarding physio at community events and was a physio at several marathon events. She's finishing the last few months of her bachelor's degree in physiotherapy and is currently practicing musculoskeletal physiotherapy and neurological physiotherapy. She also has a keen interest in the field of women's health, but there's no doubt many men can benefit from her sharing today. If you're ready, it's time to man up with Debbie Wu. Good morning, Debbie. How are you feeling today? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for being on the show today. Now, Debbie, there was a big word for me in the introduction, musculoskeletal physiotherapist. What does that actually mean? So, musculoskeletal physiotherapy, it's basically physio which focuses on um, your muscles, your uh, joints, your bones, your ligaments. So, in musculoskeletal physiotherapy, if you work in a hospital, usually you will be called in to help People who have, for example, fractures, they've uh, fractured or they've had a torn ligament or they had a fall and yeah, just anything like even like um, osteoarthritis as well. Yeah, that's the acute setting for musculoskeletal physio. And then if you're not practicing in the hospital, but you're practicing in a center, then you will see a lot of sports injuries, maybe ligament tear or ankle sprains. And you also have older people, people with uh, osteoarthritis. So whatever problems you have that relates to your joints or your muscles, your ligaments, your soft tissues, then a musculoskeletal physiotherapist will be involved. Ah, I see. So for our topic today, I hope we can shed some light on lower back pain and give us some tips on strengthening our backs. But first, let us begin with what lower back pain is. Okay, so if we talk about low back pain in general, low back pain is actually a symptom. So it's your body telling you there's something wrong with me and you should probably get me fixed soon. So pain is usually like um, your body's warning sign. So for example, if you fall down, and you have a wound, it's definitely going to be pain because it's your body telling you like, hey, there's something wrong there. So don't touch it or you know, um, get it fixed. So similarly, even low back pain, it's a symptom and can indicate that there is something else that is wrong with you. Um, low back pain, depending on what kind of pain you feel, where the pain is, the location of your pain, and whether it goes down your leg or it's just there, it can actually tell us a lot about what might be causing, like what condition might be the underlying problem to the pain. Uh, we look at low back pain, usually there are two causes. It's either a mechanical low back pain or a non-mechanical low back pain. And a mechanical low back pain is where you have specific condition, let's just say a tumor or a fracture or degeneration happening at your spine. So there's a definitive cause for that. A non-mechanical low back pain is mostly attributed to your muscles. So it can either be your muscles that are tight or your muscles are strained or also um, a slip disc. Yeah. And to get proper treatment, we need to describe our pain to the physiotherapist. Now, I don't know about everyone else, but for me, I really don't know how to describe my pain. So maybe you can give us some ideas. Uh, tell us a bit about the different types of pain that we experience. And when is it serious or alarming that we need to see a physiotherapist? Hmm. So um, pain, we also have a lot of different types of pains. Uh, maybe you have like a sharp pain, a dull pain, or it feels like aching, you have uh, pins and needles, numbness, tingling, soreness, muscle soreness. So each of 
these um, types of pain actually help us to narrow down further um, on what could be the possible cause of um, you feeling that low back pain. So it's very important if you have low back pain to actually be aware of what kind of pain you're having or to be able to verbalize the kind of pain that you're experiencing. And then after that, you just note it down. And when you see a physician, then you can tell them during this time, uh, at this activity, I felt this pain. And this, this is my description of the pain. So for example, um, when I'm sitting down, I feel a sharp pain. Or when I'm uh, jogging, I feel a very aching pain. So usually if you have like a aching pain or you feel like a little bit of soreness, um, that's usually related to your muscles. So then that wouldn't be very serious. But the moment you start feeling um, either sharp pain or pain that radiates down, goes down to your legs or your um, ankles, then that's um, when you should actually take it seriously and go and see a doctor. Yeah, but that being said, it's also very important to get it fixed as soon as possible. So if you feel this like aching, soreness, you can always go and see a physio and let them know. Yeah, because as physios, we work a lot with muscles as well. So um, we'll be able to help you alleviate the pain as well. You, you mentioned dull pain earlier. I mean, what is dull pain? I mean, for me, pain is just pain. So what is dull pain? It's basically... Uh, a sim- a little bit similar to aching pain as well. You know, sometimes after, how should I say? Yeah, okay. Uh, let's just say you uh, you hold a certain position or you bend for it for a long period of time or, or you, okay, okay. Let's just say you slouch, okay? You're sitting on your chair and then you slouch. After a while, you feel your back starts feeling like this aching feeling. So that is the dull slash aching pain ah, yeah okay 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 i think i get it i, I have that <laughs> okay when when i <laughs> sit down right like when when i work and i'm sitting down in my chair and i'm working uh, for quite a long time i suppose and then when i get up right i'm stiff and i have to tear my body from my from my legs apart to be mm. straight mm, yeah but then after a while you will feel like okay like if you go with your activities then you feel that it's fine already like you don't really yeah. feel that pain anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But still, that dull pain is a concern, right? It is a concern. But with a dull pain, um, maybe you can see a physiotherapist first because that would indicate that um, there's something wrong with your posture. So then the physiotherapist will help you to correct your posture um, and actually, yeah, see, look, have a look at your workplace, how your chair height is, how far you are from your desk, your computer and actually um, help you create better posture in terms of like your workplace and everything because a lot of people sit at their desk for a really long time so if it's eight hours it's just eight hours of holding that uh, same posture and so that can actually take a toll on your body as well your joints your muscles and that's how a lot of people get uh, back pain actually so having a physio to help you assess your posture and um, checking, just checking your ergonomics, um, how's your seat and everything, that would actually be a really big factor in helping reduce the occurrence of back pain as well. Yep, I'm sure my back pain is down to poor posture over the years. And Debbie will be giving us some tips on good posture. But right now, Debbie, can you run through the causes of lower back pain? Um Definitely uh, age. So the older you get, the wear and tear happens in your body. So your body is kind of like a car. The longer you use it, the more problems there will be. And the older it gets, the more problems there will be. So similarly with aging, um, there's defi- it's definitely one of the factors that will cause low back pain. Um, another one is obesity because... Um, heavier you are the more load you are putting on your joints and your spine so your joints and spine can only take up to a certain level of weight so when you actually overload it too much it will definitely cause problems as well another thing would be work besides um, desk people who always sit 
at their desk. You also have mechanics or electricians who do a lot of bending forward. So this uh, bending forward can actually lead to this prolapse and then it will cause that sharp pain behind them. Yeah, if you're an electrician, you do a lot of overhead activities um, or, you know, you work in a factory and you do a lot of like heavy lifting, you have to carry boxes. So that can all lead to back pain as well. Okay, so for those of us with low back pain, how do we begin treatment? For back pain, um, definitely, it's definitely recommended to see a physician or a physiotherapist because talking in a physiotherapist aspect, if you see a physio, uh, they will be able to actually uh, plan a customized treatment plan that is specifically for you because before we do all these um, exercises and planning, we actually have to thoroughly check you, assess you and um, see what's wrong with you. So you can have two different people and these two people, one person might have come to see a physio with a very acute back pain. So like it just happened yesterday. Another one have came to see a physio uh, for a back pain that happened five years ago and is still persisting now. So then um, the treatment plan or the treatment targets would be different for each person. That's why it's very important to yeah, get a own, your own customized uh, treatment plan because if you sell the information online, it might not be accurately targeted to what you are experiencing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you do the exercises and you feel, oh, I'm getting worse, then, you know, definitely it's not because the exercises are making you worse or it's not like physio is making you worse it's because you're doing the wrong exercises or you're getting the wrong treatment yep that's a very good point when it comes to low back pain it might not be the same for everybody so we need to have an individual or customized or personal assessment to find out what really is happening in our body so Debbie, just going back to the physiotherapist, uh, what actually happens when we see a physiotherapist? When you first come and see a physio, when you come and visit a physio, we'll ask you a lot of questions, um, all about your history, how it happened and everything, because these questions will actually allow us to further narrow down what problem you're having, which muscles involved, and um, whether it's a big problem or it's just a small issue. Yeah. Some of the questions that we asked would be like earlier. So how's your pain like? What are the symptoms? Um, whether um, for you to describe your pain, what kind of pain you're feeling? Uh, does it go down your leg? Does it go down to any part of your limb? Or whether it's there consistently or only during certain activities? And if it's there during certain activities, then what are the activities that aggravates the pain or what are the activities that trigger the pain? What you can and cannot do, what you do that makes you feel the pain increases. Um, another thing is also your history, your medical history. So it's very important to know your medical history because uh, let's just say someone has a history of cancer and suddenly they develop back pain and then they think that, oh, you know, it's nothing. It's just a, a normal back pain. So they come and see you and you don't know that they have a history of cancer. So you just treat them like, like usual, but it could be a possibility of another tumor, you know. So yeah, knowing your history will allow us to actually uh, treat you better, see you wholly, not just for what condition you have now but also inclusive of everything else i'm always curious um what's the difference when i mean the physiotherapist will ask does the pain go down to your butt or does it go down right to your leg what's the difference in 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 the two um, does it signal something yes it does actually so when you have a nerve compression depending on which nerve it gets compressed it goes down to your, it will, you will have that radiating feeling or that numbness going down your leg. If it goes down to your butt, it's probably not that severe yet, but the moment it goes down to your leg, it's quite bad, yeah. So then the cause of action will be different as well. Um, usually this radiating or this compression of nerve is caused by your disc. So if you've heard of sick disc, it's what a lot of people are having nowadays. So that slip disc um, can actually compress your 
nerve. If you look closely at the spine, which is the, the beige color stuff, um, you actually have like your spine and then you have a layer of white stuff over there. That's your disc. And behind your disc, there's actually nerve roots that are coming out. So these nerve roots are what helps you feel things, are what helps you walk, get movement. So when the moment your nerve root gets compressed by this disc, because you have a slip disc, then you will start feeling um, symptoms going down your leg. So it can initially begin to go um, start from your back and then you feel it going down to your butt and then after a long time you might feel it going down to your legs mm. so if that's the case it should be that the moment you feel the pain you should go and seek help but um, if you are the kind to wait for it to get more severe then the moment you feel pain going down to your butt you should definitely definitely um, go and get it checked yeah because it's not it's probably not just some numbness because you sat for a long time, but it's because of your nerves. Lah. All right, so guys, remember, if your pain is going down to your butt or going right down to your leg, it's time to see a physiotherapist or a doctor or physician ASAP, all right? Now, Debbie, let's get into the fun part. What exercises can you teach us to strengthen our backs? So these are just a very general exercises that you can do home and if these exercises do not help you or does not alleviate your pain or it increases your pain definitely go and see a physician or a physiotherapist to get your own customized exercises okay so for back you would definitely want to strengthen your core muscles not just your abdominals but also your spine as well so the first one we can do is this exercise, which is what we call bird dog exercise. For the bird dog exercise, what you want to do is you want to go on all fours, so your knees and your palms on the floor, and then make sure that your hands are underneath your shoulder, like directly, diagonally underneath your shoulder. Body and tie are in a 90 degree position. After that, once you feel stable, bring out your opposite hand and opposite leg so for example if you're taking out your left hand you bring out your right leg as well and what you want to do is you want to make sure that your hands and legs are in a straight alignment and after that just um, hold that position make sure you suck in your tummy to contract your abs and hold in that position hold in that position and then just repeat it for three sets of ten so you just hold it out and then you come back and then you hold it out and you come back. This helps to strengthen your core muscles. So as you do that exercise, um, remember to suck in your stomach so that you are contracting your abs and try and stabilize your body. So because you're on your hand and your knee, you will feel a little bit wobbly. So when you lift it up, make sure that your back is in a straight alignment together with your hands. So you don't want to have one hand higher up or one leg lower. And your head should be uh, face down um, or face straight? Looking forward ahead. Forward, forward. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's the bird dog. What's next? The next one to strengthen our core, we have planks. For planks, you want to make sure that your body is straight as well. So make sure that before you go up in a plank, lie down and keep your hands under your shoulders. So you want your shoulder and your elbow to be in a straight line. And then after that, uh, as you go up, yeah, just make sure your shoulders and elbows are in a straight line and your body is in a straight position. And you don't want to open your legs too wide. So just a little bit would be enough. So if you do planks and you feel like it's very difficult for you to get that straight line, or it's very difficult for you to plank like this, then you can always do a modified plank where you start with your, um, instead of um, going on your toes, you can start with your knees first. So your knees will be down on the mat and then you just plank like normal. All strengthening exercises, it would be good if you are able to do um, three sets of 10 repetitions each. 
All right, the plank. I'm sure many of us are familiar with the plank. What's next? The next one would be side planks. So these side planks will help you strengthen your muscles which are at the side. Um, because, yeah, the side muscles are also part of your core muscles. And, you know, just like how you build a building, you want to strengthen every every side of it. So similarly, you want to strengthen your body at every side as well, not just only the front or the back. For the side plank, it would be planks, but on the side. So what you would do is you lie on your side and then put your elbows, your forearm and elbows um, directly under your shoulder. And then as you come up, just observe and make sure that your shoulder and elbows are in a straight line and bring your body up. Make sure that your body is not tilted too much behind or too forward, but it's in a straight line as well. And if you feel that um, holding on your feet are difficult, then you can always drop your knees and start with the modified side plank first. Similar to your planks, this one you can um, hold it for 10 seconds and then you repeat it 10 times. That was the side plank. And remember, guys, if you have bad knees, you know, make sure you consult your physician or your doctor uh, before you do any of these exercises if you're a bit concerned about your knees. All right. Now, Debbie, what's next? The last strengthening exercise would be our Superman. The Superman, you want to start by lying face on your mat first. And then after that, um, bring your hands forward and straighten your legs out and then just bring both your hands and your legs up at the same time so when you do this you want to make sure that your arms and legs are in a straight line and you want to make sure that your chest and your thighs are off the mat so as you go up you just hold it for five seconds first we start with five seconds first and then you just relax and then you continue for another 10 times and then the moment you feel that um, you're getting stronger that five seconds is very easy for you then you can always go on to 10 seconds 20 seconds 30 seconds so the duration is what we're aiming for not the height of the leg and the hands right i guess or both. <laughs> it depends also like if you're not able to go up initially then um you hold it whatever level that you're able to. So actually, it's just very little, like it's just higher, just a little bit off the ground. Then you can start with that first. And then as you continue, just try and gradually increase that distance. So in a sense, um, the height is also important. But as you are able to go higher, you are definitely getting stronger around your back. So I guess um, as you go up higher, you will definitely be able to hold for a longer time as well. Superman, that's interesting. Now, remember, guys, you know, take it slow, take it easy. Uh, as my yoga teacher always tells me, it's a journey. So, you know, don't push yourself too hard. If you're just beginning to do all these exercises, make sure you take it slow and just move forward as you increase in strength. Now, Debbie, is there any other exercises or stretches you want to tell us about? Uh, the last one is the cobra stretch. So what you want to do is you lie face down on your mat and put your palms under your shoulders. And then after that, um, just push your body up so that your whole torso is not on the mat. And if you find this difficult, you can always start with your forearms first. So what you can do is put... Uh, lie face down on the mat and then put your forearms underneath your shoulders and just push yourself up and hold in this position for 10 seconds. This will also be very useful for people who feel um, a little bit of a, like a very tiny, mild, sharp pain um, because sometimes, uh, depending on your posture, um, like for me, for me, for example, um, if I sit, I do occasionally tend to slouch as well. And after slouching for a while, I start feeling a sharp pain. Like it's consistently sharp there. 
So then um, if I know that, you know, it's my posture and I know that I've been holding a bad posture for a long time, then I will do this. So this exercise will actually help with your back, your spine mobility, as well as to alleviate that little bit of sharp pain that you feel after a long time of sitting, a prolonged time sitting. And if you know that um, your posture is wrong, you suspect that there might be a little problem happening at your spine then you can always do this other than that it's generally a very good stretch position and it's very good for people backing all right so those are four exercises to strengthen your back and also there's a stretching technique that you can try out at home now don't forget man up malaysia is not just here to create awareness but we also want to encourage you to take little steps uh, to get healthier to be a better version of you and at Man Up Malaysia, we have a health pledge. So what you do is you just download the pledge and you pledge to do one thing, just one thing uh, to get healthier. And Debbie has given us a lot of exercises and uh, stretches. So maybe you want to put that down as one of your pledge to do it maybe, I don't know, daily, three times a week. Yes, just take that first step for a healthier you. More details at manupmalaysia.com. Now, Debbie, apart from the exercises that you just mentioned, what other advice can you give us to have good posture? So if you are working and you or you have a like you spend a long time at your desk, you have a desk job which requires you to just sit there for six to eight hours, then very important thing that you need is a lumbar support. So lumbar support is basically um, if you see on Shopee or you see on Facebook, people are selling that that curve thing that you can put on your chair, behind your chair. So that is to help support your lumbar, your low back, so that you don't go into a slouching position. Mm. But that is also another problem with getting ready-made lumbar supports is that sometimes it is the curve is too much for you and it ends up giving you other sorts of pain because it's it's too, yeah, it's too much of a support. So an easier way would be to just roll a towel and put it at your low back where you feel that curve. Yeah, so you just put it at your low back and you just lean against it. Yeah, so that will help to support your low back. And when you are sitting on your office chair or any chair, make sure that your feet are flat, your feet is flat on the floor and your knees are in a 90 degree position. It's definitely going to be difficult to maintain these positions for a long period of time. That's why you hear advices of people telling you to, you know, get up, stand up and walk, move around and then come back and sit. And that's actually a very, very important thing. But I think a lot of people just don't remember to do that myself included but yeah um it's very important to get up and walk because you don't want to stay in a position a position for a long period of time so let's just say you sit uh in a slouch position for four hours it's definitely going to strain your muscles and load your your spine in it's gonna give like additional load on your spine that is uh unnecessary um the strain on your muscles and it's going to eventually lead to back pain as well um yeah another thing to remember is uh let's just say um desk work again as well if you have a desk job it's very important to keep your frequently used items like let's just say your keyboard your mouse your phone within 36 centimeters from your body so you measure from your body and 36 36 centimeters away from you that should be the maximum level between you and the things that you always use so you don't want to like overreach for your keyboard or you don't want to sit like this and use your keyboard so you just mark out that 36 centimeters away from your body just mark it out and make sure that the things that you always use are within that area it's very important like even as you watch tv also to um I won't say sit properly because it's very hard, but you can always be aware of how long you've been holding that position. So let's just say you're slouching like this. You just be aware that, oh, okay, um, one episode is over and I'm still sitting like this. And maybe the next episode, you just change to the other side or something. It can be comfortable, but 
just be aware of how long you've been holding the position. Yeah. So when you constantly change positions that you feel are comfortable for you, then I think it will be fine. Yeah. Yep. This might sound like simple reminders, but if you don't practice them, you know, you're going to be in trouble and you might be having some back aches and low back pain uh, in a few years' time. So trust me, you want to avoid lower back pain as much as possible, right? Now, Debbie, I've been reading that back pain can affect our sex lives. How is that so? Yeah, so for some people, um, they can have a really, really low, really, really bad low back pain, and that can affect them physically as well. So what happens is um, when you're always feeling that pain, when you're always aware of that pain, you always feel that pain, you're always very uncomfortable because of that pain, then it can actually affect you uh, psychologically as well because all you feel is just pain, nothing, everything you're doing doesn't help you, everything you're doing is just making it worse. So then psychologically, uh, you won't have any interest in doing anything at all. And that can actually, you know, the low moods can actually lead to a low um, sexual drive because you feel like, yeah, I just don't want to do anything, I just want to lie down i just want to you know i just want the pain to go off and all you can think about is just the pain so then your focus will be on the pain and not so much on your sexual drive another problem would be um if you have back pain and let's just say someone has back pain and the person has sex in a specific position and only in that position and that position causes to um or aggravates his back pain then definitely the moment the back pain aggravates, the moment the they feel that this is actually making my back pain worse, they won't have any sexual drive at all. Their sexual drive will drop a lot because they feel like, you know, um, when I have sex, it causes my pain. So then I don't want to have sex because it causes my pain. And then, yeah, together with that um, psychological thought as well, they will come in together. It will play in together. Yeah. Another one would be related to your pelvic floor muscles. Sure, like women, women would know that, you know, we have pelvic floor muscles and uh, a lot of women would have heard about Kegels exercises, but men also have pelvic floor muscles and it's all part of your um, core muscle complex. So what happens is that it can be either too tight or too lax. So um, if it's too tight, it can actually restrict the blood flow that is going to your penis and then it can actually put pressure on your nerves as well and that's why um, it can cause erectile dysfunction in some people because um, the blood flow is not going, there's no stuff, like not enough of blood flow that is going to your penis so then um, the erection cannot happen. Another one would be because of lack mus uh, lax muscles so when your muscles are not strong enough your muscles are weak um, similar to any other muscle in your body um, they are not they are weak they don't have enough strength so they cannot actually help to maintain and engage in that erection so they can hold it and then that's why it can lead to a weakened contraction and you know some yeah it can lead to erectile dysfunction as well so uh, you mentioned just now about the Kegel exercises. Uh, how, mm. how does that go and how does it help? Kegel exercises are a set of exercises which are to strengthen your pelvic floor muscles. And just like how women do Kegels exercises, it's important for men to do Kegels exercises as well. Not just in older men, but also in young men as well. Be, it's important to be aware that you know, you have this muscle and this muscle actually helps in your sexual uh, sexual activities. So very, very important to strengthen the muscles. So what you can do is lie down and then you imagine that you are peeing. And as you pee, you just like try and contract and stop the flow. You hold that contraction for initially five seconds. So you hold it for five seconds and after that, you relax. And that is when you contract, you are actually contracting. That contraction is actually your pelvic floor muscles. And your pelvic floor muscles not only helps in your sexual activity, it also helps with your urinary um, 
continence as well, your bladder control as well. Right. So Kegel exercises are something we can look into for men with ED or incontinence. But Debbie, you know, should we be really uh, talking to our physiotherapist about our sexual problems? So if you have low back pain and you have difficulties in your sexual life, you feel like maybe you might have an erectile dysfunction and you feel very shy to talk about it, I think it's it's very important for you to let um, your physician or even your physiotherapist know as well because these problems you would want to work together with your physician or your physiotherapist to actually help you find a solution to it and yeah you shouldn't think that it's the end like having low back pain or having erectile dysfunction is the end but definitely you know when you uh, let your physician know or your physiotherapist know um, work together with them to find a solution that really helps you as well. Are many people, especially men, forthcoming in talking about their sexual issues to their physiotherapist? Mm, not really, actually. So that's the problem in Malaysia, is that in terms of like sexual health, a lot of people are not very vocal about it or they don't really share much about it. So even not just sexual health, but even when you ask them like... Um, in terms of uh, incontinence, like urinary incontinence, your bladder incontinence, they would be very uh, defensive and be like, hey, why you ask, you know, like, what's the relation when, yeah, you're just trying to help. I understand that they are not aware of it as well. Like, a lot of people are not educated about it. So, yeah, just a shout out to, yeah, be open. Lah. You have to, yeah, if it's a problem and you feel like you are able to trust the physiotherapist or the physician that you're seeing, then you can always um, let them know so that you can work together to find solutions. Because in physio, um, we also have this branch called Women's Health and there we treat a lot of uh, women-related problems and it includes sexual problems as well. Physios in general, they will definitely be open to helping you and finding a solution regardless of whether it's like women's health or men's health. So if you are um, a bit um, shy to talk to a female physio about your men's problem, you can always go and look for a male physio to you know, um, let them know and ask them whether you know, there's anything that they can do. Yeah, I guess I've always thought of sexual problems as a medical issue and I never thought how physiotherapists may be equipped with knowledge or some experience to help us to find a solution with our sexual problems. And if you have some sort of problem, you might want to check with your physiotherapist. Uh, maybe they can help, uh, maybe they can't. Well, if they can't, they might you know, refer you to someone else, to another colleague or someone who knows, another physiotherapist who might help you to find a solution to your sexual problems, uh, you know, doesn't hurt to ask. Now, Debbie, before I let you go, can lower back pain ever go away? Definitely. <laughs> it's just... Really? Um, yeah, low back pain can actually go away if you are disciplined enough to go and visit a physio, you are disciplined enough to carry out the exercises at home, to carry out the changes, the lifestyle changes that you need, or the postural changes. So... Yeah, if we are talking about like let's just say um a non-mechanical low back pain that the low back pain that is not attributed to like, tumors or anything, then it can actually be relieved a lot. Yeah, but it's important to note that you shouldn't just treat the pain itself, the symptom, but it's very important to find out the root cause. So let's just say it's a muscle involvement. The muscle is are the muscles strained or are the muscles tight? Um, what causes you to have this back pain or is it because of a slip disc? If it's a slip disc, then where is it? How is it? Yeah, so if you're disciplined enough to carry out your physio sessions and your home exercise programs, then you'll definitely be able to see a change in your body as well. All right, so that's great advice, which means we do have hope, but we must take action. Debbie, thank you for being on the show. Not only did we understand low back pain a little better, but we also got some exercise to work with at home. Debbie, thanks again. And I can't wait to have you back on one of our next episodes. So I hope you'll come back. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. That was Debbie Wu, a physiotherapist. Now, for those of you who are tuning into this podcast with the audio-only version, and if you're not 
so clear on the exercises that Debbie mentioned. You can watch our show on YouTube. Yes, our YouTube channel is titled Man Up Malaysia. Well, if you're watching this and you found the information in this video helpful, please like the video, share it with your friends and family, and do subscribe to our channel Man Up Malaysia for more men's health topics. And don't forget to take the health pledge. Just pledge to do one thing to improve your health. More details at manupmalaysia.com. I'm Kevin Francis for Men Up Malaysia, encouraging men to get healthier one pledge at a time.